Hi, I'm Jeff. And I'm Shilia. And uh, we are going to be having to terminate our pregnancy this afternoon. Um, I had a biopsy done of my uterine lining yesterday when I got to finally see my OBGYN about my situation. And um, my, um, my HCG levels only went up like 500 uh, levels, like from like, you know, a nine day period. <laughs> and my OBGYN said at this point, like, you know, if there's no heartbeat at this point in pregnancy, like it's not a viable pregnancy. And uh, she, her diagnosis was that it was ectopic. No, she said inconclusive. Did, no, that's not what she... She said it might be. No, that's not what she said. I see. Yeah, I'll, t I'll uh, let people know what the doctor said to me. Okay. That, um, you know, what was, inclus what was inconclusive was whether this, uh, like, whether uh, a baby, I think, had developed, like a little fetus had, like, developed, or, like, if I was actually pregnant. And uh, she couldn't tell... Um, and she said that never happened to her before. And I'm like, well, this seems to be like the same, Standard, yeah. same story that I've experienced over the last like month. <laughs> but, um, she sent it off to a lab and they concluded that, yeah, like there was like, you know, like, like nothing developed, uh, you know, no, no baby like developed. Uh, so, uh, here we are, um, you know, I had to get my labs done today, and uh, I'm going to be taking uh, methotrexate. It's methotrexate. Methotrexate. And uh, it's going to, um, like, release the, you know, the pregnancy as it is, uh, because it's obviously not safe to have it there. So we, uh, our previous HCG levels nine days ago were 2,500, then we uh went in on tuesday and got a blood draw and on wednesday we went to see the doctor her yeah. OBGYN. the hcg levels were then 3000 we did an ultrasound and the uh gestational sac inside shalia's uterus was the same size no heartbeat no changes whatsoever right uh just stayed the same as uh as, as it was before when we had measured it when we were all like, how is this here? You know, yeah. this is ridiculous. This is impossible. Yet there it was. And uh, you know, while Shalia's HCG, HCG levels went up a significant amount, it's not uh, an, a compatible amount. Like, th this is not a, a, a living It's not going to be, yeah, it's birth. not viable. Where yeah. before there was a chance and there was hope and there was potential and, like, there was miracles happening. Right. Uh, now it's very clear right. that uh, this is not a viable pregnancy. They, uh, she immediately did a um, procedure to uh, examine Shalia's uterine lining to mm -hmm. determine if there was any amount of, um, if there was if there was a baby in there, you know, if there's like birthing material or, what were they checking for? Um. Oh my gosh! Why can't I think of the word? Like. Yeah. Placenta placenta cells basically cells to yeah. indicate that there's you know there's baby cells going on. yeah <laughs> sorry we're, we're going through it right now uh there's yeah. baby cells in the uterus and uh so they got the it was the results back yesterday afternoon shortly after called us and said hey we don't understand these results we uh they're inconclusive and so we felt like we were right back to where we were the day before we we're like well is this some act of God, some miracle. Like, like what's going on? Why can't right. we ever just get a clear yes or a clear no? Right. But and then finally, uh, this morning, uh, while we were doing our spiritual work, uh, at a very auspicious moment, they called and said, you know, they had sent it to a different uh, specialist to look at the results. And the specialist concluded that there are no... Uh, there are no pregnancy cells inside of Shalia's uterus. Like baby. Yeah, and so is. the next step was to terminate the pregnancy with me methotrexate um, because the doctor is concerned that it's ectopic. And uh, so that's what we're going to go do later on this afternoon. Uh, Shalia's going to feel pretty rough for the next few days. It's, yeah. got some, it's, not a, it's not a nice medicine. It's pretty brutal. 
So uh, we're gonna be going through that, but we wanted to make sure that we got to sit down with you, yeah. update you, let you know where we're at uh, with this before we're uh, you know in all healing mode. <laughs> yeah, usually when uh, I go into healing mode, I'm not uh, able to really be on camera or like do any kind of creative work. It's just it's just healing, you know, healing. So that's why, like, I wanted, you know, both of us wanted to come up in here and share with you uh, what we're going through. And um, I'm really proud to be sharing our journey with you because, um, like, this is the reality of our life. And, um, like, we don't always have it easy, like, that some people might like to believe that, oh, we, here we are, you know two gorgeous uh, people together and you know we're spiritual and like sunshine and sunshine rainbows. and rainbows but like we like <laughs> we get brutal challenges um like our entire life this is like this is definitely like it's a ch it's a challenge mm -hmm. um but like i think you and i have probably gone through far worse yeah. in the past like so um this is not an and, existential like uh, right you know fundamental shaking of our existence right it's a real hard challenge but it's a hard challenge and it's bringing up stuff to heal within our own um self and our own mind and like for us this is a really wonderful opportunity to go into that place um i don't know like maybe some people call it the dark night of the soul or you know when you really are going through going through it and like for us um this is how we purify ourselves and this has definitely been um a very clear theme for us uh throughout this pregnancy um cycle <laughs> i guess i'm calling it um is the purification and the healing that has come up because hey like like you, I've been traumatized and Jeff's been traumatized. Mm -hmm. Being on this earth is pretty fucking traumatic. <laughs> um, and especially if you have like really unconscious parents, uh, like it's traumatic. And so uh, here we are, we are not like special. Like we too have traumas and we're healing them. And you know, this is an opportunity. And like I felt yesterday when, um, she did what does she call it like an endometrial, endometrial biopsy, yeah, biopsy you know like god damn that was an experience uh it was i experienced pain it's a medical procedure without anesthesia <laughs> yeah and uh you know and i saw it yeah you that were was not yeah i watched a medical procedure on my wife yeah that was rough yeah, you were really good though, and you helped me a lot. I'm just the support here. You're the one diving in. You don't need to look at me. I like, know, but poor like, thing. Like you went through it. Jeff saw me at like the apex of like experiencing like pain, and he like went like right over to me and put his hands on my heart chakra and was like telling me how like the pain is not real. Like it's sorry, I'm getting emotional. Okay, you're good. Yeah. yeah. Because I could feel like what you were saying, like, yeah, like that pain, like she was touching like my sexual trauma, but it was like, not so that uh, I could experience suffering, but so that I could experience like the healing, you know? And so like, it was really hard, you know, and it felt like really vulnerable and, you know, um, but I felt like, uh like that the uterine the piece of uterine lining that she cut out of me like it was so strange it literally felt like she like cut the trauma like right out of my uterus my uterine lining and like and, and I could feel like that was the pain that I was experiencing through the procedure and like and it was odd because I told you like when we came home I popped some Tylenol um, and we did a reading and I could feel like it was like where it was like she removed like like it felt clear there like where she had taken her sample like it felt clear and I was like wow like it feels 
empty there, like in a good way, like, you know. And I'm like, there is a power behind like Western medicine. Yeah. Like that I don't even know if like they're aware of, but. I think they're aware of their Western <laughs> <Yeah>. medicine power. <laughs> I guess, yeah. I think maybe you're speaking to like there's spiritual power to it too. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, here it is. Yeah, crying. It's okay. I think that no one faults you for crying <laughs> this time. Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, and I don't, um, you know, like, want to scare anyone. Like, if you have to have that procedure, like, it's not that bad. Um, it was just really emotional for me because, like, in that moment, like, that she said she had to do it, it was definitely, like, you're not having this baby right now. And so I think, like, that also hit me at the same time of, like, now I'm going to, you know go in your uterus and cut out a sample and, you know, also like in <laughs> kind of like help spur my healing process along like my trauma here. And so, yeah, like, um, I do feel relieved in being able to move forward. And like this experience has brought like a lot of like spiritual awareness and healing. And, um, like, I'm not afraid to dive into it because like, um, I want to become like who I'm meant to be. And I don't even know who I'm meant to be. Like only God knows that. And I know that God has been leading me like this whole time, um, ever closer to him. And, uh, like I have found this experience to be like really healing. Um, even though like so far I didn't get a baby out of it, <laughs> like, um, it's been very clear to me that like a baby and a family, like that's not the source of my joy. Um, like God is the source of my joy. And, you know, watching some of these family vloggers, like watching like their birth video to like fast forward, like present day. And it's like, it's like, they don't like their kids, you know? And some of them like said that like almost point blank. And I'm like, it's such a contrast to like how you were feeling and acting like at the birth video when you're receiving your baby. And then the reality hits of like, well, you don't really get anything. Like, like kids are always needing and always asking, like they, you know, they require, they require their responsibility, their responsibility. Um, but one thing that I have been learning throughout this process is that, um, like, I need to take care of myself first because I can't take care of anyone if like I'm not taking care of myself. And I think a really good example too was like, I heard someone talk, a, a guy on YouTube, he's a you know, dad vlogger or whatever. He's talking about like the family tree and that the roots of your family tree is your marriage and that you have to put your marriage above your kids. Uh, because your kids come from your marriage and your kids are like the branches and they're like the leaves and they do need tending to, but you can't at the expense of your roots. And uh, if you don't, like your kids are going to suffer anyway from you not tending to the roots of your marriage. And um, yeah, I definitely feel like the truth of that in this experience, actually, because like I felt like my whole life has been centered around this baby and this pregnancy, like this last like month and a half or something. And like, you know. Well, this is what we teach, you know. We've taught in Twin Flame Ascension School. It's God first, then yourself, then your twin flame, mm -hmm. then your family, and the rest of humanity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so true. And, like, what was hard was, like, feeling, like, our marriage not being able to be tended to in the same way. Like, not having to have sex forever. Like, and now we can't have sex again for God knows how long. And... Like, it's, it's hard because, like, for us, like, that's part of tending to our marriage. Like, that's where we get a lot of connection and bonding. Now, it's not the only way we get connection and bonding. Well, it's, you know, this is an opportunity for us to uh, work on ourselves and our own personal connection with God and fill ourselves up. It's true. So that, uh, you know, when we're through this challenge, uh, that we can come together and, you know, enrich, you know, healed, more intimate new ways. 
It's true. And like, I noticed that like the first time when we, you know, had to take a break um, until, you know, until we got preg positive pregnancy tests or whatever, and then beyond. It was, I noticed like, you know, our sex life what changed and went to like, it deepened and it went to the next level because we were in a way like forced to purify. And um, so it's pretty cool, actually, like this part of like, you know, like where we have to stop and take a break. <laughs> <laughs> but I know like it's leading us somewhere. And um, for us, like what we know and what we experienced so far is that like um, sexual union with your twin flame and harmonious twin flame union, like it's a pathway to God in and of itself. Like it brings you closer to God and like you can ascend on those energies. Um, but it's about doing it responsibly and knowing how and doing your inner work and purifying. And I think this is definitely, like I said earlier, this has a, been a purification, this whole pregnancy thing uh, for us. And so, yeah, like it's definitely teaching me to take care of myself first and foremost. And it's deepening that awareness, deepening that awareness. You already understood how to do that. I already understood, you're deepening that. but yeah, deepening it into areas that are calling for more of my love. And it feels really relieving to me to be able to recognize that and be able to like start the process of loving myself there. Like last night before bed, I did like an hour of yoga or, and it just felt so good to um, like go into those places in my body. Oh man, <laughs> it's a crime video today. <laughs> that was like calling for love, you know? Yeah, <laughs> thanks. This has been like not easy, you know? Um. <laughs> I can't understand that, yeah. yeah um, and like being able to like feel the pain in my body, like doing yoga last night, like rather than like before I'm like, oh, pain, resist, resist, don't go there. I was like, no, I need to face it. And like, it started to like, um, like feel really good. I'm like, this is like the, this is like physical mirror exercise, <laughs> you know? And like, and I noticed that like, um, when I was doing like pigeon pose, and I felt like that pain and that tension. And then I just like brought my breath and my love there. It like relaxed. And like, I felt like, like sexy relief is like, all <laughs> I don't know how to like best explain it. But like, you know, I was just re I've been reading about my birth chart and astrology. And like, I have like, you know, my, my four, like my first four planets are like, uh, all in Virgo and stuff and it was I was reading in my book that like like for Virgos like being physical is like really important to like feeling like that good feeling in your body and um like yeah I started to really resonate with that because I'm like oh yeah like this it it does something for me like it feels like romance when I'm like feeling my body moving good and like feeling that like healing and that release like there's a feeling that you feel inside, like in your spirit, in your heart. And I was like, yeah, like this is it, you know, like I'm onto something. So um, I think that's all I really um, am able to share right now. I'm probably possibly going to be bedridden for the next little while. I don't know. Um, well, uh, a few things. Um, we're not going to give up. After no, this. we're not giving up. This is like we, you know, we're going to defer back to our initial plan when we first had the miscarriage with this pregnancy cycle. Yeah. Uh, and that is you clear this out, finish up all the stuff, get back to healthy and, uh, you know, try naturally for a couple years and we'll, you know, see what happens from there. Right. I think they're saying for the next couple months, like three months, like we can't be like trying to conceive from taking methotrexate. But after the three months, you know, um, it's all clear and I'm going to see, well, you know, if I can like start my like vitamin regimes to boost fertility, um, you know, during this three month period. So I'll find out more, but ultimately we're not attached to an outcome. No, we're not. We're no. just taking our guided action steps mm -hmm. 
so that uh, we can move forward toward the dream that God placed in both of our hearts. And early on, at the very beginning of Twin Flame Ascension School, uh, we used this example of uh, the Twin Flame journey is kind of like a, a super shopping spree. And you're at the start of the aisle with your empty shopping cart. And at the end of the aisle uh, is Twin Flame Harmonious Union. That's the thing that you're after that you, uh, you came for. That's the desire in your heart. And as you're pushing your cart along the aisle, it's a very long aisle, you know, for many of us. You're pushing your cart along the aisle, God's going to stop you. He's going to point to things on the side and say, hey, you're probably going to want this product. And you might grumble and say, well, fine. Here's this product. All right, let's go to the end. And he's going to say, wait, stop. You're going to want that product. And all along the way, you thought you were just going to Costco to get some toothpaste and you ended up spending $600 on all sorts of things. And uh, this, is, this is the spiritual journey. God places... A grain of sand of desire in your heart when he really has uh, a beach to give you. He gives you one shining star and he wants to give you the sky. And so all along, if you're just focusing on that one shining star and thinking that that's your happiness, you're going to be quite unhappy until you receive the thing at the end. But if you recognize that God has big dreams for you, uh, and that um, all along the way, that every step of the way is God bringing you closer to him and bringing you your joy and bringing you, you know, your, your spiritual gifts and bringing you all your good, then uh, you can have equanimity of mind. You can uh, have deeper peace within yourself throughout the process. You can recognize that whatever this thing that's happening right now uh, it's not it's not the end of the world no it will pass and you will move forward and you will experience even more joy on the other side of it and guess what it's not the last challenge it's not that you're gonna go through and this is why we're happy to role model to you like the spiritual work that we do and the spiritual work that we teach um because like what we go through the challenges we go through is like universal in a way like every every person goes through like really hard hard shit hard challenges you know mm -hmm. um but like we're happy to share like what's been working for us and um you know it's definitely like the healing work that we do and that we teach like it's changed my life like i use it obviously on myself well, it came to for years it came to be because of the traumas that we experienced in life mm -hmm. and when we looked around we weren't satisfied with the options that were available to us and yeah when we did find pieces of things that were helpful for us we brought them all together and uh, it formed into uh, this healing modality that we teach. And it, it formed into this body of work, which we call unionism, the teachings mm -hmm. of union. And it's, it's a healing modality. It's a way of life and being. It's an approach to life. And the results that it brings are stupendous and powerful. And the journey it takes you on is, is powerful. Yeah. And... Um... You know, I just want to share before we wrap this up here that, um, you know, if you're seeking to heal your trauma and you know, like you're in trauma right now, like we do have a healing modality available to you right now uh, to offer you that healing and that relief. And it's called the Mind Alignment Process. And you can check out mindalignmentprocess.org uh, if you would like to know more information um, or perhaps talk to one of our practitioners and see if it's right for you. Um, yeah, we, we really want to offer that. Well, we did. We turned it into we a uh, healing modality that practitioners can bring to you directly for uh, yep. specific traumas. And if you're not sure, uh, you can still talk to a practitioner for a free consultation. Uh -huh. And they can help just, you know, discover whether map is right for you and for this particular trauma that you're working yep. through we do map on ourselves so yeah. <laughs> it, it works for us it helps it's very effective very effective so i think that you know uh we're healing a lot of your sexual traumas yeah and uh that this time ahead of us is uh, an opportunity to purify 
Uh, I know we're going to have lots more to say yeah. uh, in the near future, but uh, this will be the last video we do for a little while until Shalia is recovered enough to return to uh, this work of sitting down with you and sharing with you our yeah. spiritual process and journey. Yeah, that sounds really good. Yeah. So uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell if you would like to stay up to date with our journey. We're going to continue sharing it and uh, we know how YouTube things can get, uh, you can miss stuff e even if you're a subscriber. So right. make sure you hit the notification bell. And we'll so. put the link for the mind alignment process uh, down below in the description. So, so yeah, check uh, that out. Thank you for joining us. Thank you thank for you. all of your love and, and support. support. I uh, felt it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and your prayers and your kindness. Yeah. It has been a beautiful experience to uh, share this with you and to see the compassion that uh, that you have for us. And uh, it just shows what beautiful people that you all are and what a beautiful audience we have and, yeah. uh, you know, how divine that you are, too. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. God bless. God bless. Namaste. See you next time. Bye. Bye.